Oh, and he shoots! And what a goal. I'm Patrick Alvarez, wow. owner and founder of Real AFC. Hey guys, so on this podcast we have Everett Patterson here, uh, father of Everett Patterson Jr. the third. Uh, he's our 2008 boys goalkeeper. Uh, so yeah, we uh, brought in Everett today, go over the history of where his son started with the club and where he is now and kind of give it a uh, parent perspective and fully organic so that way those that are listening or whoever um, kind of sees... Uh, the perspective from a player that came from a different club and where he is now with our club. So uh, we got Everett here. Hello, Everett. Hey, Pat. Thanks for having me. No problem. Yeah. Uh, so Everett, so talk to me about uh, why you chose Real with AFC for your, your son. Yeah, so I actually kind of stumbled upon uh, the club here. Uh, my son was playing for another uh, premier team in Dutchess County and you know, what, what occurred was, as we were going to other tournaments and I was watching the level of play from the other teams, it just seemed as if, you know, my son and, and those other kids were just behind. Um, I'm not really that familiar with the sport of soccer, but, you know, as a former football player, and I played up through the collegiate level, you know, I know athletes in competition, and he just seemed outmatched. So one day I started looking online for private training uh, in the Hudson Valley, and I stumbled upon uh, Pat's Club. A wild encounter. So uh, I, I remember as if it was yesterday. It was a Thursday in particular uh, in the wintertime. Had to be, I think it was probably the week after Thanksgiving, and I called Pat one night and said, hey, I'm looking for private training for my son, place for another uh, premier team in, in, in Dutchess County, and Pat said, hey, I'm running a training for my elites in Carmel, just bring them by so I can evaluate them. So um, I brought him by that night, and uh, from there, the rest is history. His, his soccer IQ, um, night and day difference, you know, he seems more plugged into the game, uh, more situational and, and, and field awareness. You know, I'll give the credit to Pat. He just more passion for the game. I, I did not see that previously. Attention to detail, you know, working on the on the little things. You know, what what Trey looked like I think it was three, four years ago to, you know, what he's able to do in the field now today is, is the, the transformation is mind blowing. And, and only those that were there on day one will really have a, a true appreciation on the quantum leap that he has, has taken from a, a technical ability and in addition to just his overall athleticism. So what I, what I would say is there, there are, if I had to point to three key areas where I've seen uh, tremendous development, I'll, I'll first start with his athletic Ability. So on, on day one, uh, you know, maybe it was baby fat, we we'll call it whatever it was, but you know, Trey could barely, you know, jog 20 yards uh, and was overweight. You know, fast forward to today, you know, out of 20, 22 kids, he's probably in the top five for our fastest kids on the team. So, and he's a goalie. And he's a goalkeeper. So that's that you know that transformation in itself is is wild. And over the summer, at, at a pool party, <laughs> you know, uh, Trey has defined uh, six pack. So his his physical transformation is 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 off the Richter scale. So from an athletic standpoint, just his his physical ability and that athleticism, uh, night and day. Two, like I touched upon earlier, the just his technical ability, you know, his his ability to uh, be technical on the ball. That I, I didn't even know what that looked like prior to Ole. <laughs> so um, again, as a non-soccer player, you know, I didn't know what that meant. But now that I've you know been a part of the club and you know call it the club, part of the family, you know, for the last three or four years, and I, now I understand what being technical on the ball is. 
And then the third thing, which I think is actually the most important thing is, um, Trey's an introvert. And over the last few years, I've seen him come out of his shell, become more vocal, have a more presence, and to you know be, begin to become the young man, the young future leader, hopefully, um, that's had to deal with um, adversity and challenge and, and working through problems, you know, both on and off the field. You know, I think that. You know, Ole has challenged him, and it's it's making him to become a you know better young man. I think that unless you know you've grown up in the soccer world, um, or just have you know access to it, there's a lot of clubs, a lot of products, a lot of camps. There's a lot of noise um, in Hudson Valley. I, I imagine that's everywhere in the country. So as a a consumer that that was just unaware of how do you tell what's you know a good product versus a bad product without without having knowledge the 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 proof of that is in the results that we're seeing week in week out we may not win every single game but it is very visible when watching the LA boys play that they just dominate um, possession. I mean, they're, they're just able to do what they want to do on the field. Now, you know, the soccer gods have it that way where, you know, balls are shanked or, you know, what have you. It's, it's, it's sports. And even good teams lose every, every week, um, even at the professional level. But when you watch the, the, when you watch the Olay boys play, it's, it's evident from the other parents how we outplay them. And um, it, it, the, the, the transformation of journey has been wild because, you know, three years ago with my son as the keeper, you know, some of the games were pretty tough. Um, but, but, but Pat was instilling a system and a way of play that was rooted in a strong technical foundation. And what I mean by that, for, for those that are listening to me that have any clue what I'm talking about, is just simply playing the ball out of the backfield with your keeper with his feet. That was an unheard of concept at other clubs. And even to this day, we barely see teams doing that. And I would cringe, I would close my eye, and I would say, oh my God, this is about to be a goal. And it was rough in the beginning. There was times we scored on ourselves by passing it back to the keeper. Yeah. And I stuck it through, and you, you gotta continue, continue to move forward. I seen the ball go under Trey's foot, over Trey's foot, <laughs> through Trey's foot, um, and where most people will avoid that at any cost. You know, I remember we were playing at the net one day, and they're like, oh, you just hear the whole crowd, like, whoa, they pass the ball back to their keeper. What are they doing? Like, it's not allowed, you know? And, and now I would say Trey <laughs> makes it look like it's like a breeze of walking the park, you know? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing to watch. So, you know, whereas three years ago, I, I would say, to today, I'm not even really, you know, paying attention. The only time where you know you might cringe a little is on a you know when they're pressing, uh, you know, a high press and just kind of playing through that level of pressure and making a quick, a good decision and playing a good quality ball out of the backfield. But it's like anything, you know, you do it constantly under pressure. You, eventually you master it and now it's a beautiful thing to watch. Uh, I think Trey loves Pat when he loves me. <laughs> I mean this he's he's committed. This is this is his family. And, and again that's why early I said you know I don't want to use I mean yes it's a club but you know these boys view themselves as a family, Pat included. I mean he's they're up late at night playing FIFA and you know chatting and talking and there's a there's a relationship and a bond both on the field, and it starts with Pat, um, that carries off the field. And that's a, that's a pretty cool thing. That's something that the boys will have, um, you know, for the rest of their lives. I mean, these are the memories and the moments that, you know, they're gonna look back on in 20, 30 years. And, and, and hopefully it'll be pretty cool for Trey and, and all the other boys to come back, you know, 10, 15, 20 years from now and 
help out the little ones and say, hey, I was part of the founding teams of Ole. So, I, you know, I think it's it's the beginning of something pretty special. It's pretty cool. You know, we're, this program is still pretty young, um, but what are your expectations for for the future? Was oh, a, a national championship. Point blank. Yeah, that's 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 my goal too. Like uh, I kind of I, I kind of always uh, drop the seed in there. Like this is the Mighty Ducks with, with Bombay. You know, like mm -hmm. a bunch of misfits, as <laughs> lack for better terms. You know, um, and turning them into quality bowlers and and uh, accomplishing great things together. Uh, it's like Everett said. It's it's really unique uh, how we are off the field. Like you know and the way we are on the field. It's beautiful across the board. Um, I, honestly, it's amazing. And I wouldn't trade anything, anything, to not be with these boys. These boys have been pretty much my entire life for the last five years. So, you know, they originated the club. They, the old eight boys were the start of this club. Um, so it's beautiful. So that that Thursday night in that November four years ago, within one hour of watching the the practice, I knew this is where Trey needed to be, and and, and the reason for that was um, Pat had the O eights, the O nines, the O sevens, O fives, O sixes. I think he had the entire club there. Uh, from, from at least a boys' standpoint uh, at the Carmel uh, Sports Complex. And what I saw was everybody was working the drills regardless of age, uh, running the same technical drills. So it wasn't watered down. Yes, was an 09 expected to do what an 05 was doing at the pace? No, but technically the, the, the structure of the drills, there was no deviation from it, um, and it was all business. I mean, yeah, the boys were having fun, but it was it was business, and I never saw a practice ran that way um, so technically focused. Uh, listen, the reality is the boys are having fun in this fun and winning, but they're also here to learn how to play the sport and, and to play it the right way, um, so that they can become the best versions of, of themselves. So just the way the practice was run and the fact that um, during that training session, Pat wasn't on the sideline telling them what to do. He was actually out there on the field with them, actually demonstrating this is how the drill is supposed to look and how it's ran. So he was actually doing what he was teaching. And I just saw, you know, again, kids that were younger that were able to move the ball with more technical proficiency than kids from the previous club that I was with at all ages. And I said, wow, I didn't think Pat was going to take Trey because it was out of his league. Yeah, I saw the potential of Trey. I mean, like, like I said in our first podcast, you know, I didn't start out with the best, you know, and but the one thing I saw in Trey is that, yeah, was he did he he looked like he was allergic to the sport in that session, like he technically very very behind. But what I saw was a parent that was dedicated. Well, one he came from High Park all the way to Carmel, which is like probably a fifty minute drive, um, in a blink of an eye. So that one shows me, you know, they're willing to go the extra mile, pun intended. Uh, two, you have a kid that's self-motivated. And three, he's a good kid with a great attitude. Like, you, you can tell right off the jump. For me, that's all I need. Because with all those three things combinated together, you're going to have somebody that's invested into the sport, dedicated to the sport, and a kid that wants to get better on his own. And I knew that with the right training and the right information and time invested, that Trey would be turned into a quality player. That I think he was going to be... This good, I mean, whew, crap. Trey played right back last weekend. He looked better than kids that played right back for the last three years for me. And he's a keeper. You know, to go back on what Everett said about, you know, the three things that really, you know, popped up in his head was one, I turned him into an athlete. One, you got to be able to compete. And to, be, to compete, you got to be able to run, to fight, to 
defend, to attack, and without gas in the tank and fitness and standard, you can't do those things. Two, he said it was technical ability, controlling the ball, being able to execute with proper technique and fundamentals to do the proper thing with the ball, not messing up. And then three was soccer IQ, um, but you know, Trey's uh, attitude and becoming a leader, but soccer IQ and decision making. And you know, it's pretty, pretty, it's pretty cool to hear that from a parent. And those are the things that coming from somebody that their background is football and no soccer experience and, and seeing that and being a student of the game since his kid has fell in love with the sport and for him to nail those things because those are the first three steps that I focus on as a coach. Um, then after all that, it's all the details, like he said, like the, the small micro things. Um, you know, how do I get my team to operate at 99.9% .9 so on a bad day that we're operating 82% we're still playing better than majority of the rest of the world. Um, so it's really cool to sit back and listen and, and the fact that he sees that through his lens is amazing. So, you know, this, this is actually the way this all came out was spontaneous and the fact that that's the points that he, how he answered is just amazing because he nailed it on the head five years. So, but that's, that's the thing that I do. Like whatever it also said was, even if we lose games, we're out playing teams. So my job as a coach, like, yeah, I could play to win and change up certain things and, and change up my style of play. Like I like to say, is like I live and die by my sword. So, you know, my job is to develop players and to make them better. So when these kids are done with me, and what I mean by done with me, when they graduate from the club, these kids can then go into other teams and be polished players in, in their respective position. You know, I could do certain tactics and certain ideas and execute certain things that could probably raise our chances of scoring or bypass the midfield or, you know, do these other things. And But I'm not teaching the kids anything. So if we do lose a game, what, nothing, but we outpossessed and we built out the back end, you know, we're learning. We're getting better. We're practicing our trade and we're polishing it and sharpening our blade game after game. And it will come a time where Everett then said something that made me laugh is a national championship. We will master what we do and we will perfect it where then when we do meet so, match up with those opponents because truth be told I don't have the best athletes in the world. I have a great group of kids that believe in me and my philosophy and parents behind them that, are, that push them and, and follow my guidance and believe in me as well with kids with a quality soccer IQ, uh, IQ and I'm developing them and teaching them a philosophy and style of play that I learned in Europe to master the game and control the game and to control the outcome. I want to thank Everett for coming by. Thank you, brother. Thank you, sir, for having me. Um, JP, thank you, man. And uh, that's the podcast with a parent perspective. See you guys next week.